And hello, everybody. It is Tom Chenault. It's Adrian Chenault, and it is the Legacy Leadership Radio Show. And I do hope you are having an unbelievable day, and we have a problem that I had not noticed. Uh, I don't know if you guys know me very well, but one thing that I absolutely don't like very much is a mirror. And so I think I might have inadvertently taken a shower to get ready to come on the radio and not looked in the mirror. And therefore, I didn't put the junk in my hair and I didn't comb it. So as a result, I look really, really, really a lot worse than usual, which is usually pretty bad. But I put on a jacket out of reference, out of respect for the beautiful Lauren. I just blew the hair. So I want you to know that I know and we're going to have to deal with it. And I spoke about it. So therefore, it's not the elephant in the refrigerator. And how are you, Adrian, my son? I am tremendous. I would love for you to come all the way into the frame in spite of your hair. And we are excited, man. This is going to be fun today. She's the best woman I know. And I've known her a long time. She goes deep for human beings, especially women. And she's just all in all the time at a level you people cannot believe. And if you grow up and you're looking for a role model, it should be Lauren. And I'm just telling you that for a fact, she has just done it. And I love her. She's an author. She's a woman's woman. She's not afraid to look anybody in the eye and say, we can do better. And here we are, right? Amen to that. Take it away, baby. <laughs> I, I'm so excited to have you back on the show, Lauren. And I, you know, I was I was meeting earlier with uh, a really really cool uh, person who needs to be at your event, actually, whose name is Jordan Hartheim. And I was telling her about you and and what you have done. And just as I was reflecting on that, you are truly one of the most inspiring women I've ever met. And I'm just telling this whole story and going, man, this is a great story. This is such a cool person. And uh, we always love having you with us on the show. So welcome. Uh, well, thank you. I love being with you. And I think your hair looks fabulous. Oh, my goodness. Thank better you. Better than usual, to be honest. Well, then right Maybe. upstairs, I'm like, I better, I better go brush my hair. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, maybe you uncomb it. That's all you need to do. Whatever it is, <laughs> it's working. So, Lauren, let's go right. Oh, by the way, next week, Mark Victor Hansen on the show. So, yeah, he wanted to come on today. And I said, No, no, you are preempted, buddy. You can't even tie the shoes of Lauren. And Mark goes, I've sold 500 million books. I said, That's Mock Turtle. By the time she's done, it will be bigger than that. We are looking at Michael Jordan in the fourth grade. It's Lauren LaHave. And well, uh, isn't I, that you know, I, I love Mark Victor Hansen. I got to tell you, um, he, I asked him because uh, Tony did the forward to my book, Life Tune-Ups, but I guess he wasn't allowed to put his name on the cover that he had done the forward. Mm -hmm. And Mark Victor Hansen, he was so sweet. He's like, I'll do a testimonial for you. And then guess what ended up on the cover of my book? Mark, yeah. Victor Hansen, Mark Victor Hansen's quote on the cover of my book. And then my book ended up in People Magazine. And so that was kind of cool. I'm actually looking at it right now. So I love hold Mark. It hold it up. Hold yeah, it up. We want to see it. Let's, hold, hold it up. up. Hold it up. Hang on a second. Okay. So here's the deal. While she's doing that, you guys, Mark Victor Hansen, I know, and I'm not going to shout their names out. I there's the, Look at that. So it was in People. Look at that. It was like the most inspiring book of the year. And look at that. I don't know if you can see... Mark Victor Hansen. Yeah, yeah. He was, uh, yeah, me and the Dalai Lama. That's pretty freaking good. I don't think, and that wasn't even a marketing campaign. <laughs> okay, Mark Victor Hansen, put that one in your pipe and smoke it. But about him, most of the icons are really good in front of the camera, but the other 23 hours of the day, they aren't so good. Yeah. Mark Victor Hansen is better behind the scenes than he is on camera. And I don't know many people like that, including myself. So my hat is off to the guy, but we got you right now. And we want to know all about how you got here first, and then we'll figure out where you're going because you are such an inspiration for women, especially, and girls all over this planet. It's unbelievable. So take it away, Lauren. Tell us a story. How did I get here? How did I get here? I guess I got here, you know, my, my parents raised me with very strong contribution values. That's what our life was about, was how could you give back? I mean, my dad was with the Lions Club for 52 years. And so it was all about, all about service. Who can you help? Who can you serve? Whether it was, um, you know, 
we worked with the blind a lot. It was one of the, my parents raised me with very great work ethics. I mean, I think as we would get up every morning and every on the weekends and we go to the flea market, we, you know, go to the garage and at 4.30 in the morning, pack boxes, go work all day at the flea market, then come home. I don't know, maybe go to the Waffle House, something like that. And then we pack up and go the next day. So I think the work ethic, I really respected my parents so much for their work ethic and then their level of contribution. So it, with that, I guess that's where I pretty much got started. Very humble. My grandparents were immigrants. So um, from, where were they from? Hungary. And uh, so super, super amazing and very, very blessed. And then I was going to, I went to the University of Georgia, go dogs. And I worked at the football department. And then I was going to- that's pretty cool the last couple of years. Uh, it's very cool. I was, it was very, very cool. And I'm working, especially working in the football department right after Herschel Walker, you know, and then um, I was at the game last year, but it was, it was so powerful because I think, you know, so many times people think that it's just luck, especially at the end of the game. I don't know if you saw the end of the game at the last national championship, not this one, but the one before and, you know, um, since then, he threw the ball, that really long pass. Adrian, do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end, they, and it was like within the last minute, and everybody said, oh, my gosh, that was such luck. And it was like, what are you talking about? They practiced that play over and over and over and over again. And I think that's that's the big thing, Tom, we talk about especially, that it's not luck. People have been practicing and practicing and practicing. I mean, look at Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield. I mean, I remember when Jack was speaking at Louise Hayes events back then doing some teacher's guide book. So it's like they've done things. And and finally, like there was something that got uh, chicken soup for the soul to stick. Right. But you have to stay in the trenches, I think, is a big thing. And there's something to be said about, you know, just time. Right. Like you can't expect everything to happen in just overnight. Everybody's expecting to be in overnight sensation. I remember being at Tony's house in November, 1989, right? And he had 25 people at his house and events were 60 people. And then someone was asking me, then what was the size of events back in the nineties? And it was like, you know, 2000 people. And then it wasn't until, um, I'm not your guru came out where events grew to like 12,000 people. So I think you have to be patiently persistent is the biggest thing that I've learned. Patiently persistent. So I got to rewind. My buddy Shia LaBeouf, the actor, my buddy Hauser, Paul Hauser. Both, I was in a meeting in, 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 a, in a course of meetings with them and they were both eating at Waffle House. So I, I'm going, why is anybody eating at Waffle House anymore? And you just brought up Waffle House and I went there and it is so good. And I'll bet you it's been a week or two since you've been to the Waffle House. Go back there because it will remind you of your childhood so much. I would totally go back there, but there are no Waffle Houses on the West Coast. So that's why I'm always looking for an excuse to go to the East Coast and have me some Waffle House. <laughs> that's so awesome. But, you know, you think about your parents and everything's a tribute to your mom and dad, really, because they brought you up right. And my mom passed about 15, 20 years ago. And I'll never forget, everywhere I went, I would always call my mom and said, you're not going to believe this, mom. And having those memories and your memories and being able to go back and be the byproduct of your parents' values is unbelievable. And I know your son, Joshua. Yes, you and do. As a result of that, it is such a beautiful thing seeing him become his mother. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And Lauren, I am unbelievably proud of you for so many things, especially who you are for that little boy. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. Don't make me cry on the on the radio or news or whatever we're on. Make me go <laughs> cry. I mean, I think that that's the biggest thing is that we have to remember our kids are always watching and not, I think that they... They're always watching even like he's 26 now right but he's still always watching and i think that understanding how important it is to walk your talk <laughs> um i i think that i don't want to be i don't want to be teaching the lesson i need to learn most do you know what i'm saying yeah i think that i i for me personally i'm really looking about who's out there doing it and that's what you do i mean you really really do it um and i'm very very grateful to have you in my life so that's that's what it's about, my friend. That's a little bit of my story. That is what it's about. <clears throat> and 
So you talked about, I, I loved that, that phrase contribution values with your parents. What, you know, what does that look like? You know, I have, I have an 11 year old, a nine year old and a six year old. And you do? I do. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. And, and so I, you know, and I think about this all the time, right? Because I it was very difficult for us when he had two kids in junior high. <laughs> he was so young. He was so young. He had children so young, you just wouldn't believe it. Oh goodness. Uh I, I think a lot about, you know, I, I'm such a I'm an achiever. And that's good news and bad news because I think I have this achievement orientation. And I think that I, there's parts of that, that I, that have really not served me in, in my happiness, even if they've served me in other ways in career advancement or whatever. And so I want to have different values that I pass on to my kids. And so I think a lot about that. And so what is, how, how do you have contribution values as opposed to achievement values or, you know, do what the world tells you to do values when you're That's fascinating. It's interesting. One of um, the ladies that is speaking at the event that we're doing, she, I've done so many values exercises. And so then she said that she had this values exercise to do. And I'm like, Oh my God, not another freaking values exercise. And I got to tell you, it was the bat, the best values exercise I have ever done because it focused on something making realizing that one of the values was something that was called meaningful work yeah. or meaning. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like that was it. Not just like career or success. Like you talked about, it was about doing something that really mattered. And I realized that's really what it does for me. It's not about success. It's doing something that really leaves a footprint and my legacy in the world. So it's exactly what you talk about of legacy leadership for me. <clears throat> um, success is contribution. Success is about, having that contribution part of it. For me, it's about, you know, touching one person, then that, that's been a successful day. If I said hello to somebody and, um, and maybe I gave them a smile or maybe I gave them, I don't know, whatever, for me, that is success. So I think it's what, you're, what success represents to you. I, I love that. And, and I love that frame of meaningful work because that's that's really what it comes down to and and I think as we you know figure out as parents as mentors as leaders in all these different forms how to help people to to move towards something that is going to move the needle in the world it emanates from doing something that's meaningful to them. So I love that. We got to take a quick break here. You're listening to the Legacy Leadership Show with Adrian Chenault, Tom Chenault and the amazing Lauren Lahave. Stick around. We will be back right after this. Whoa, show me some people in here. Yeah. Doug Stare, you little angel. He's the greatest. Yeah, you know, Elizabeth him. Larson, our right-hand woman who loves Lauren. Alex Eaton is in love with you. He was one of your assistants at GoPro. And that's where he felt that's, I mean, he's just overcome by how great you are. And the list goes on and on and on and on. My little buddy, Mariposa Dolphin, who should call me one of these days because we've never spoken and I'm a fan of you. And we're coming right back right now. And we're back. It's Tom Chenault. Adrian Chenault, it's the Legacy Leadership Show with Lauren LaHave, one of the most amazing women, I swear, I know in person in my life. And she has made a difference in my life on so many levels. But what she's done, I'll never forget that little girl that you, you caught. Well, the first time I ever really got hold of you was when you called me about somebody that was in trouble that needed some money or you were given something happened and I gave money. And Usually when I give money, I never hear from anybody again. You kept me up to speed on every stage of that little girl's life. So that money I gave meant something to me when I gave it. It meant something to her and it meant something over and over and over again because you know how to do it because it means something to you. Right, Lauren? Absolutely. And I'm going to tell the quick story because I, I don't even know if you know the whole story real quick was I have a bracelet and it says stay true on it. And I was standing in line at Whole Foods and this little girl in front of me, she had a trach and she was, you know, they were in, in line and she kept like looking at my bracelet. And so she grabbed the bracelet and I took the bracelet off. She was only a couple of years old and she took the bracelet off and I gave it to her. And the lady was like, no, no, you don't have to. I go, no, I really want to. A year later, I get a call and it was a call from this lady saying, hey, is there any way you can come by Sunrise Hospital 
um, Ursula as I can't leave. Ursula's had open heart surgery. And can you bring some, um, you know, just like some food and some, uh, some new bedding for the bed. And I'm like, what? It's kind of weird, but okay. So I get to the hospital. And I'm like, how did you find my name? How'd you get my phone number? And she goes, you gave Ursula this bracelet and she held up the bracelet and she goes, and Ursula won't go everywhere, anywhere without the bracelet. And she looked up your, I found your phone number from your website because on the back, it said the name of my website. And, um, this little girl had already had many open heart surgeries. She was waiting for a heart. We were able to help. You were able to help because they needed a house and, um, you were able to help them by doing that. So I think you just never know. You never know what one kind thing can do for someone's life. You show up and everybody wins and never say no. Yeah. Try to never say no. Because I'm telling you what, that world that no lives in is usually God's world. And that's where yes should reside. Yeah. And if you haven't read The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer, that's what it's all about. And my whole thing in my life is trying to never say no, no matter what. Because I, I guarantee you the best things that ever happened in my life lived inside of the things that I didn't want to do. And yep. something came out of that. That was a miracle. Just exactly like you running into that little girl in the grocery store. Right, Paco? Yeah. And, the, and you just never know. Like that, that's the, that's the most amazing thing in that story is that you, you know, you, there, there was no grandiose intention in that moment. You, you know, you gave her something that was, that was clearly more meaningful to the kid than to you. And, and then God had a bigger plan for that moment. Right. And, and so, you know, saying yes to the tiny moments is what I think so often allows you to get to those bigger moments. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and Ursula helped a lot of people, a lot of people. Um, unfortunately she passed away. She was waiting for a heart just last year. She passed away, but she, um, but she, you know, we always talk about, you know, do you want so many people are focused on things that really don't matter? And we always talk about, do you want to add more years to your life or do you want to add more life to your years? And the one thing that I'll say is that she had more life in her years. I mean, there's so many people that are walking around dead because they're complaining and bitching the whole time. But this girl lived, you know, um, we helped get her a dog, helped get her like, a, you know, the most amazing Christmas. They built a huge backyard. They came and did a story on her. Um, and I just, like you said, you don't have any expectations about what it is other than just being able to support, support however we can. So, so we're listening to, to Lauren and, and you just can't, you know, the, the biggest thing is I, I love every time we have you on the show, I love being in your presence because I, I just feel your heart. And I know that everybody who is listening and watching with us now is feeling the same way. And you probably are wanting more where that came from. And Lauren is putting together an incredible event that is coming up end of March. Uh, there's a virtual version. There's a, a version that is in person in Las Vegas at Warre Studios, which is a, 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 a thing you need to see in its own right, just because of the incredible production that she's going to be putting on. And if you want to go and check it out, you, you can go to ownyourworthexperience.com and they've got early bird tickets that are here for about another week. So you definitely want to go and jump on this now uh, while you can get it at the lowest price. And it's just, it's going to be incredible. So I want to talk more about that on the other side of the break here. We got to take another quick break in a minute. Uh, because some of the people, and we were talking about this just before we went live on the show, some of the people that you, all of the people that you oh. have brought to this, uh, this experience are just unbelievable. And uh, so we'll talk more about the Own Your Worth experience on the other side of the break. We've got the amazing Lauren LaHave. You've got Adrian Chenault and Tom Chenault listening to the Legacy Leadership Radio Show on the Genesis Communication Network. Man, did you hit that break like a pro, buddy? Not too bad. And Lauren. Lauren, yeah. So, Lauren, we are going to have a lot of fun on the other side, and we are going to promote the living crud. Hello, Mark Cottle. Holy mackerel. This kid can play the piano. Oh, yeah? He runs a couple hundred miles a week, which is incredible, at 9,000 feet. Politician. Crazy kid, that Mark Cottle. Yeah. We've got a lot of people. Paul Van Dieven, your mom, we're praying for her. 
unbelievable. And we're back. It is Tom Chanel. It's the Legacy Leadership Show with my little boy, Adrian, and the great Lauren LaHave. And I'm telling you, everybody, get a piece of paper out and a pen. Because who she is bringing to this event in Vegas, and I don't know if you guys saw Eric Worre and Grant Cardone today, but they put on a performance of epic proportion, and people were just literally jumping up and down out of their bodies, finally seeing their future. And if anybody is good at that, it's Lauren. Because most of us have been to the Eric stage. We've spoken on it. I don't know two people that have rented that place <laughs> once, twice, many times. Lauren saw it and said, man. This is unbelievable. This is a great venue. I think I'll rent it. And she's done it. And she's done it more than once. And it just about breaks her every time she does it. But the juice is worth the squeeze. So she goes and does it again and again and again because she's a lunatic because she came out of that, oh, that same class as Tony Robbins where nothing's impossible. Play it bigger when you feel like you're going to shrink down expand instead. And that's what she does. And I love you, Lauren, and take it away. <laughs> that's a great way. I love that you said um, juice. What, what did you say? Juice it with the squeeze it, whatever. Did you I have say? no idea. The juice is I worth mean, the squeeze. <laughs> the juice is worth the squeeze. I mean, I think that is it. You've got it when you're, when you're scared out of your mind, that's when you have to do it. And I, you're right. I took a risk. I said, if this is right here in front of me, if it's here in Las Vegas, and I can add value and help people by renting this place and putting on experience, then why wouldn't I do it? So I rented it this last January. We had 5,000 people virtually, we had 200 people. In the, no, we had 100 and something in the studio because it was Omicron. We translated in, tri in five languages. And I personally put the money in that I did not have, <laughs> right? It's kind of like what Eric always says, say yes, tell the world, figure it out. And it was so amazing. I mean, if you can help one person, is it worth it? That's my whole thing. It Yes. I mean, through contact mapping, like if you have one person, is it worth it? Absolutely. So then I was like, okay, let's do it again. So I rented it again. And that's why I just literally am coming off an event again that I rented the studio for. Me personally, I didn't ask anybody for any money. I put it on. Same thing with this event at the end of March. Me personally. Um, I'm bringing in, you know, I'm bringing in a lot of women that before, first I just got off with doing a, um, a podcast with Dr. Shafali is one of our speakers. She's amazing. If you don't know who she is, she's off the hook. Uh, we've got Kathy Buckley, but we've got a lot of like everyday women who are out there that you might not ever hear of them, but they are freaking total badasses. Can I say that on here? Yeah. Anyway, this, oh, I'm like Marina. I think. I don't know. I was like, I'm, I'm hoping Marina is going to be there with us. This lady, amazing. Her name is Rhonda Viteri. Their book is um, Grit and Grind. And she does turnarounds for companies. She's done over 23 turnarounds. She's done 92 marathons, triathlons, everything. Cray, cray. She's been, she's amazing. Like I said, Dr. Shafali, um, Molly, Molly Carmel, who you'll hear about, a girl named, um, Kaylin, she created a, she was on the, she was on the, what do you call it? Shark Tank. And she created a company called Jiggy Puzzles. A lady named Mara Smith, she created Inspiro Tequila, which is all women owned. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Lucy Dowdy, who when her husband passed away, she inherited 60 of his companies, 60 and a, and a football team. And she figured out how to run all of those companies. She's one of the top philanthropists in the world. She works with the Pope and no one might even know who she is yet. But I'm going to make sure that the world knows who these people are. We have Hotworks is sponsoring the event. We also have Patriot, a lot of amazing um, companies that are really behind the event because I believe that it's never too early and, I, and it's never too late to own your worth. We have a Holocaust survivor that was in Auschwitz. She was 14 years old working in Auschwitz, still talking to your friend to see how we can figure, have her, her be part of it as well. You guys, it's really important. People right now, they have to remember their worth. And people are playing, like you just said, owning your worth to me is all about playing at a bigger level and, and not playing small. So if there's a part of you that's feeling like you're playing small and you need something to kind of, you know, push you, not push you, but inspire you to own your mindset, own your money and own your mission, that's what this is all about. Own your mindset, own your money, own your mission. How cool is that? Every one of you, when was it? men, women, child, I'm thinking about you, Phil Bevan. I'm thinking about you people out there where you can just literally change the world. And 
I'm in a space in my life right now at age 71 where literally every day is a thought process around what have I done and what am I going to continue to do? What really drives me? And I want to go to your event. I mean, even though I'm a man, I want to go. And why? Because I'm telling you what, the women seem to be driving the game. I mean, most powerful women in network marketing, Eric talks a lot, you know, he gets a lot, a lot of play out of the little GoPro, but I'm telling you what the badass as your, for your words of the whole deal is Marina Wari bringing those women together with their stories of redemption, where they show other women how to do it. It's wonderful. And you're just an extension of that. And thank you because we need the female Tony Robbins of the world to go out and grab that microphone. And that is you, Lauren. And thank you. Well, you know, I, I mean, the way, but I do love, I mean, I met Tony by delivering. That's how I started. We were dropping off food to the homeless, November, 1989. And, you know, Adrian, you said something very important at the very beginning. You know, Tony talks a lot about something is there's the art, there's the science of achievement, but there's the art of fulfillment. And right now we have to wake people up to what fulfillment, especially our youth, they need a compelling future. They need something. And that is mission. You know, the event's being done in, in Vegas and we're going to have 200 in the studio and hopefully have lots of you online virtually or come live with us. But we're going to go. Everybody takes from Vegas, but people don't give back to Vegas. So we're helping many projects that are here in town, something that's called Project 150 that works with the homeless youth. We're working with an organization called, called um, Project Maryland that makes uh, bags, the period bags for the homeless um, women and youth on the, I mean, there's so many amazing ways to give back. I, and I really want to get people to take action because we always say it's, it's what you do after you go to an event that is more important than what you do at an event. So that's what this is about. How do you go out and live it in your life? You can come to my house and you can see that I'm living it. I've got bags here ready to pass out all the time to people that are in need. I've got just like you guys, like I'm like here, I'm like, how can I really serve? How can I really leave a legacy in the world? And you guys, it's time to wake up. We do not have five, 10, 20 years. It's now. The power of now is so important. And um, that's really what I want to stress. And so some people might be like, oh, yeah, I should like do it. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to from a very abundant mindset. And that's why I said I'm looking for people to lock arms with us so that we can help people parents. truly, truly own their worth. Parents have many kids. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, your your kids, your team, your people who are looking at what you do, they they don't they they might watch your mouth for a little bit but they watch your feet pretty mm. much right you know that that's where the proof resides and your kids pay attention and uh, we <laughs> this is a we, terrible story yeah it is it's a crazy story we so uh there's you know there are there are levels of this there's and levels so of stupidity so anyway long story short when we were kids when my parents first got divorced my dad moved into like a singles like apartment complex with two bedrooms. So there was his bedroom and then a bedroom for my sister and I with a bunk bed. Well, one day we come over to dad's house. He goes, Hey kids, great news. You guys got your own bedrooms. And we go, well, that's kind of weird. You you're not, you're not really allowed to put additions on apartment buildings. So how did that happen? And he goes, well, you know, this place has these huge closets. So each of you, your new room is you get to have one of my big walk-in closets in each of these two bedrooms as your room and we go well that's weird and okay why and he goes well i met a homeless person and he's gonna live with us now <laughs> and this is all 100 percent true and so his name was isaac uh what none of us knew was that he was truly going to become a part of our family until the day he died he moved with us and he spent what, seven, years? seven years of his life with us he became part of our family uh, Child Protective Services was never called in this entire experience, which is maybe miracle. the miracle of the entire thing. But it taught me so much about you know, and many other experiences because that wasn't a one off. That was a, an expression of who you were. But we spent time in homeless shelters. We spent time in the back of AA meetings. We spent time in all of these places 
and saw that it's more than just throwing a couple bucks in the plate as it goes by, that it's a lot more about actually giving a dang about another human being and being willing to see them. And as crazy and arguably stupid as it probably was at the beginning to let this guy move in with us, that was an expression of that this human being matters at a deep, deep level. And I will, you know, I, I've carried that with me my entire life. It's the way your sister is. It's the way you are. It's the way Dominic is. Denise literally married him because we didn't kick him out when we got married. He just came along with the new family. Yeah. All of us, all of us need to learn from that. And see, you know, never look down at anybody unless you're bending over to lift them up. That's all it boils down to, right, Lauren? Yeah, and I think you just never know. I mean, I remember when I had just gone through my divorce, the recession had happened here. I was, it was hard, you know, it was those hard times. And I didn't say I don't have the money or don't have the time to go help out. We went to a, a shelter. I took the boys. I couldn't take Asher because she was too young. The boys were behind the line serving you know, the food. And then there was this man, Joss was taking the food over this man. I saw the guy take it and put the hood like over his face. And it turned out it was a doctor who was in town who lost his family um, during the recession. His One of his sons went to school with Joss and he didn't want Joss to recognize him. You know, I mean, you really just never ever know what someone's been through five minutes ago and so you have to take the time you know we always say just take the time you guys what how hard is it just to say how are you how hard is it to say good morning how hard is it to really go i hope you have a great day you know how hard is it for you to put your freaking cart back <laughs> in the you know when you go to the grocery store just do the right thing every doggone day of your life. And that's what I, you know, that's what I hope that we all wake up to just doing the right thing. So. Oh man, that is so beautiful. And that's what this event is going to be about. Own your worth experience.com. And I know all of you can spell that no spaces, go do it and register during the break because it's going to change your life and it's going to change your perspective. It's going to change your outlook. And it's going to change your outcome. Those are what comes out of living a life of contribution. And if you look at every one of these people that have done it, it all boils down to serving others. Become that servant and you are going to own the world. Trust me, I'm a doctor on that, right? You're exactly right. So. And, you know, this is this is where the rubber meets the road. This is This is, I think, where people see who you are and whether you're willing to walk your talk. And so find the little ways to do it first. It doesn't have to be some big thing. So we're going to take one more break and then we'll come back for the final segment. You're listening to the Legacy Leadership Show with Adrian and Tom Chenault. Be back right after this. That was a pretty cool. Hello, Sally, you little wordster. You're good. We don't even know you. Shirley Ann Horvat, my old buddy. How's it going? You know, having you people come on and just watch this show and pay attention to it makes our life, doesn't it? It totally does. And it's I so can't cool. thank you all enough. All right. We're going to come back for this final segment. I love Lauren. Please go to her event in person. There's only 200 seats. You should go. I think I'm going to. That would be awesome. And we're back. It's Tom Chenault. It's Adrian Chenault. It's the Legacy Leadership Radio Show next week. Mark Victor Hansen and Lauren at the very beginning of the show was holding up a People magazine with Mark Victor Hansen in one corner, the Dalai Lama in the other, and her in the middle. That gives you some idea of the caliber of today's guests. And I like her better than literally any woman I know. Because you know, I know her, I swear, it's a true, it's a tr I've seen you at that, I've seen you at that grind. It's kind of like Mark Victor Hansen. I've seen you when no one else is looking. Yeah. And I see what you worry about. And it makes me so happy. Because it's not about it. It's about them every time. And that's cool, right? Uh, that was a really shockingly profound statement. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it's interesting because when Tony asked me to launch Life Mastery 21 years ago, and I moved to Fiji to launch the program, we literally moved our whole family there. And I got there and I'm like, oh my God, maybe I sign on for something too big. And I'm like, oh my God, this is scary. And I went to Tony, I said, you could have brought anybody here in the world. Why did you choose me? Because I was only you know, in my 30s. And he said, Lauren, because I knew you'd take care of these people. And I'm like, I know how to do that. 
<laughs> I'm like, he goes, if he goes, the skills will show up. I think if people stop for a second, stop making it so freaking complicated. It's what contact mapping does, right? Just take care of people. Just keep in touch with them. Just do those things. Like stop for a little bit. And I said, I know how to take care of people. The skills that I need to take care of these people will show up. But if, if all he wants me to make sure I do is to take care of them, I'm good. So I just wanted to throw that in there, you know, that what a be- so what you said about pay attention, you know, what are the things that these people worry about? That's what the, you, those are the preoccupations, right? And, and how many people have you been around that are preoccupied with what everybody else thinks about them or how much money they're making or all this bull stuff that doesn't really matter versus the leaders who you have been around who are preoccupied with taking care of these people. And the, you know, that Tony, cause you and Tony are, are, you know, contemporaries of each other that Tony saw that at that age in the ascension that he was on and, you know, all of the ego and other stuff that, you know, he could have said a million things about why he chose you. And yeah. that reveals his character too, of it doesn't, it, it, those things are secondary to caring about people. And yes, you have to be competent. But there's so many competent people out there. Those that have that heart and that that insistence on looking after people, those are rare gems. And yeah, before I forget it, because yeah. Tony could say a lot. I think it was Tony that said it, but I think everybody needs to write this down because especially with social media right now, that it could be people think that it's top of mind. You know, your, your goal is to be top of mind. No. And what you guys represent and the reason why I, I love being with you is that you don't want to be just top of mind. You want to be deepest in their heart. Yeah. You, you want to be deep in someone's heart. You need to know that you actually give a you know what about them. And I think that and that's what we need. People need to, you know, people need to be able to trust again. They don't know who to trust. They don't know who's going to really deliver. They don't know what, because it's been so, you know, surface about so many things and you're be deepest in the heart. I know who my peeps are, right? I see a couple of my peeps on too. You know, I love Gigi and Cindy and some, you know, some of these people that they're just good, good, good people, but we know we got each other's back and find your tribe and love them hard. Well, I am going to quote you about 10 times and then I'm stealing not top of mind, deepest in the heart. That baby is gone, Johnson. That is a great quote. And that's who I want to be when I grow up. Yeah. I want to affect you profoundly. Right. I don't want to be a soundbite. Look at his car. Look at his house. Look at his this. Look at his that. I want people to say Tom Chenault gave a rats about me. Lauren LaHave gave a rats about me. Adrian Chenault, that, little, that woman that you met today. Yeah. That girl George. is going to do stuff with her life. Yeah, You can tell because she doesn't care about the surface. She's interested in the depth. And that's so beautiful, Lauren. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, and, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. That's what drives me every day. I mean, I think that it's like that if we get past, I mean, how many cars can you have? How many houses can you have? How many clothes can you wear? How many handbags? Like, really? Like, if you, but if you, how many people you can affect? by just being nice, by just doing the right thing, by just like, I don't know. I mean, I just, I don't, honestly, I don't get any other way. I don't know any other way. <laughs> Someone could tell me like, there's all of these things to do. Like, why do I really want people to be at this, to be a part of this? Because I, let me tell you something, Tom and Adrian, I've turned down people to be a part of this event because there have been women who are great women but their energy of what this event represents, it's not the place for them. This isn't the space. I'm sure there will be a time to be a space, but this isn't, you know, we're not selling things. We're just digging in deep and we're going in there and going, how do you mind, mind your money? How do you understand what you can do and give back more when you, with your beliefs about money and then go out there and live your mission on a beautiful level. And it's time y'all. So that's why, like, the tickets are nothing. Right now, we're actually giving them for $97. Two, we're doing a, what do you call it? A glam in time. So you can get two tickets for $97. And I'm also going to either give somebody, that if they want this book, her book, or if they want my I Am cards, or if they want Dr. Shafali's new book. So for $97, they're going to get one of these books. They're going to get two tickets to the event virtually. 
And those live people, we have um, the, the general tickets and obviously they'll get one of those as well. I just want, I want people to understand we have to come together and especially as women. You hear a lot of women say they've got a lot more guy friends than they do girlfriends. That's not, that's not good. That's not good. If we want the world to heal, the world needs a big hug right now. <laughs> right. So that's what the world needs right now. And it's those women coming together. Um, it's that mama energy that needs to be out there right now more than ever. All right. Mark Victor Hansen next week. We love you guys, Lauren. Don't go away. We love everybody. Thanks for listening to the show. Oh my God. Those tickets are, you know, I was afraid to ask how much the tickets are. <laughs> I thought they were like 500 a copy. They're two for 97 bucks and you're throwing in a book. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Was anybody else freaked out by that? Cause we didn't know the whole show, you know, so we're afraid <laughs> to go. Swear to God, that is so cool. That is so awesome. Thank you. You're so welcome. Are you going to be checking IDs or do I have to call myself Thomas Cena Chenault or can I, uh, if I come on virtually? Holy <laughs> man. I'm going to check. How much is 97 divided by two? $50. No, it's not. That's less than $50. <laughs> $50. I'm 48 50. 48 50? There you go. And you get two tickets plus a book. That's yeah. It. You guys are crazy not to take that deal. How much are the tickets in person? Um, $5.97. Nothing. Holy I'm mackerel. And if you've never experienced that, sir, ask crazy. Ask Elizabeth. She sat in the front row for, uh, for Eric, and she's not been the same since. Changed her life. Unbelievable. All right, Doug, Lauren. Doug Stair says you have to wear a dress. And, <laughs> I, and I, you look pretty good in a dress. I've seen that before. So yeah, maybe I'll, we gotta make I'll that post up. my dress in the comments on this <laughs> uh, later. But all of you, thank you. This woman is a force of nature. Go to her event. We'll see you all next week. Lauren, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love Anna. you guys. Thank you for who you are and what you stand for. Love you very much. Very, very much. All right. We love you. Hug your little boy. See you.